every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, Lord, we may exist in various ways, but for us to live, and that living is having life in abundance, God, we need your word. I want to pray that you may speak unto us this morning, for this is the confidence that we have in you, O oh God. That if we ask anything which is according to your will, you will always hear us. And if we know that you hear us, then we have the petitions of whatever things that we have asked of you. Father, as for me, I pray that you may use me as a mighty vessel of honor. For we have this heavenly treasure in earthen vessels, that the glory may not be of us, but that the glory may be of God. Open the doors of our hearts that we may hear from you. And this is a prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord a big hand clap as we sit down. May we have our seats. Thank you. And for those who are seeing me for the first time, I'm not new in this place. I used to worship here from around 1999. We worshipped until around 2008. It's for nine years I was here. I belong to evangelism and the mission team. And then from 2008, we went to Pangani. So I'm Elder George. Come out. I come from PCEA Pangani. I'm born again and I uh, have a family. They'll be with us during the Swahili service and God will keep blessing us. While I was coming, I also informed the leadership of the church and they sent me with greetings. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them greetings from the Pangani Church. We are a family. We are still worshiping at the Liberty Hall, Pangani Shopping Center. And we'll be glad when you pay us a visit there one day. I want uh, us to go to the first reading from the book of Genesis Chapter 17. The message is renewing uh, our covenant with God or renewing our covenant of righteousness with God. So just give us, because I carried a Swahili Bible, sometimes when you are a preacher of both services, it's hard to carry two Bibles. So I carried just a Swahili Bible, and I just pray that uh, our brothers and our sisters up there, I want to use uh, your Bible. So project for us the first reading from the book of Genesis chapter 17. And the Bible says, even as it is projected, that when Abraham was 99 years old, God appeared unto him and said, I'm saying you project with English. I carried the Swahili Bible and we are in English service. Just project with the English vers version. When Abraham was 99 years old, God appeared unto him and said, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2, what does the Bible say? And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. I want you to mark the word I. I. That word I there is God. That word I there is not the elder. That 
word I there is not the deacon. That word there is not the president. So who is supposed to multiply you? It is not your wife who is supposed to multiply you. For those of us who have been married, I'm almost doing my, my 20 years. Sometimes we have a, a blame game. You think the reason you are not prospering is because of your wife. You think the reason you are not prospering is because of your husband. You think the reason why the sun is rising like that, it's because of Jubilee. You think the reason why your business is not working is because of the handshake or not. But I want to tell you, I want you to mark the word I, and I will make a covenant between you and me. And I will multiply you. Our multiplication is basically in the hands of God. Your multiplication is not in the hands of your boss. So don't go around blaming your boss. Don't go around blaming your wife. Don't go around blaming your children. Don't go around blaming the presbyters. The presbyters is another word for elders. Don't go around blaming the cack session. Your multiplication is basically in the hands of the Lord. And I, so the Bible says that when Abraham was 99 years old, God appeared unto him and said, walk before me, walk before me. In other words, you have been old for all these years, but Abraham, you have never walked before me. Appreciate the Lord this morning. That's another danger. You can walk for so long only to realize that you have gone for so long without God. And the moment you realize that you need God, that is where you will begin. That is the beginning. So when Abraham was 99 years old, so Abraham was born or he was conceived in his mother's womb just like all of us for nine months, and then he was taken to church school, and then he was 10 years, he was 20 years, he was 30 years, he was 40 years, and I wonder if he ever walked before God, until when God now realized that things are not going good with him. And for your information, the Bible says when Abraham, I want you to put verse one, when Abraham, he was not yet Abraham, when Abraham, was 99 years old. So he remained Abram for 99 years. Some of us have remained Abram for so long. Some of us have remained Abram for so long simply because we are yet to walk before God. So God realized that this man is not supposed to be Abram. This man is supposed to be Abraham. And for him to move from Abraham to Abram, there is something which he must do. He must walk before me. Praise the Lord. When he was Abraham, he did so many things. Remember, it is when he was Abraham that he decided to have an intercourse with the maid and they, got bo they, 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 they bore somebody who was called uh, Ishmael. That is when he was Abram. You see, when you are Abram, you are capable of doing so many things. When you are Abram, you are capable of doing so many things because you are yet to walk before God. So wakapanga na mjakazi na ilikuwa collaboration ya yeye na bibi na mjakazi. And then by then he was Abram. And God realized that things were not going well with this man. And so he said, when Abram was 99 years, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. And then what will happen? So he said in verse 2, I want us to go to verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Many are the times that we think that God is a God of increase. God is not only a God of, of addition, but God is capable of multiplication. That is how far he can go. 
I'm not very good in, in mathematics, but I know that multiplication iko juu kuliko addition. Praise the Lord. And I will multiply you uh, 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 exceedingly. But there is something that Abraham had to do. For one, he had to walk before God, not to walk before men. Sometimes we, we are very good at walking before men. Sometimes you are very good at pleasing men. Some of the ladies dress so that they can be appreciated by men. Some of us, we do things so that we can be appreciated by men, so that they can clap for us, so that they can appreciate us, so that they can know that it's Elder George who wiped all tears, so that they can know that it's Elder George who did this and that, and they clap. That is walking before men. But when you walk before God, you may not necessarily have walked before men. And so God told Abraham, walk before me and be blameless, and I will multiply you. What is the meaning of that? Abraham, for 98 years, you have been with the society, and the society has not changed you. I want to tell you this. The society can come up with... Uh, good programs. They can come up with an institution of maybe changing the drunk cuts, of maybe giving courses to people. But I want to tell you, unless one person changes you, that word I, and I will increase you, the society can do nothing to you. Praise the Lord. Abraham was with the society for 99 years. 98 years, and God appears unto him and tells him, now I will, I, will, I, will, I myself will take over. This is a man who was brought up by parents. I believe he had parents. And for 99 years, they had not changed him. I love uh, our parents. I've been brought up by two parents. But I want to tell you this, that our victory, our breakthrough, our increase, our prosperity is not basically in the hands of our parents. For 98 years, the parents of Abraham could not change him. He had stayed with them for 98 years, and he was still Abraham. He was still capable of doing some things, ambazo zilikuwa zinashangaza until God appeared unto him at 99 years. So don't go on blaming your parents. I have a, a good friend of mine whom we share a lot. And every time we shared, he could tell me, George, I desired to be educated. I wanted to go as far as I could be educated. But I had a problem because I had a very drunkard daddy. My daddy could get all the salary at around fifth or third or fourth. And by tenth, that house did not even have a single cent. And so my mom could struggle with feeding us. And as a result of that, I went as far as Form 1. I went as far as Form 1, and not only Form 1, but Form 1 uh, second term. Because my mother went and spoke with the, the principal, and she allowed me in with a promise that by March or by April, she would bring the money. And so I went through the first term. But during the second term, the principal could not uh, 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 tolerate the fact that my mother could struggle with the food. And so I dropped out of school. So you find that this person, in as much as it was true, he had an element of blaming the father. But you see... Your victory is not in the hands of your parents. Praise the Lord. Even if we were to leave you with your parents, there is nothing they can do to you. They can't transform you. They can't change you. It is only one person who can transform you. Your parent can take you to a better school. Your parent can pay the best school fees in this world, but your parent cannot transform your heart into a heart of righteousness, no matter how much he loves you. 
the society can't transform you. Praise the Lord. So when Abraham was 99 years, the Lord appeared unto him and said, I am the Lord God Almighty. Walk before me. Be blameless and I will multiply you. Let us go to verse 3 now. Verse 3. What does verse 3 say? Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, that one is a sign of worship. Worship is the highest ministry that you can ever perform in this world. Worship is the highest ministry that you can ever perform in, 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 in this world. Hakuna kitu ambacho unaweza kufanya ambacho ni chamuhimu sana kuliko kuabudu. Even if you build God a bigger sanctuary than this, and you fail to become a worshipping church, bado mutakuwa nyuma sana. But even if you worship in a, in a mabati church, and that church is a worshipping God, that church is far. Because worship is the highest ministry you can do to God. In fact, I think it is the only thing that God is not capable of doing. All the other things he is capable of doing. Build a multi-billion sanctuary. God is able to build a multi-trillion sanctuary. Do anything. But God is not able to say, I am God, I am seated here, and at the same time, I want to go there and worship myself. God, I am worthy to be praised. I, God, I am worthy to be glorified. I, God, I am worthy to be magnified. And that is why no wonder Jesus said that God is seeking. It is the only thing that I think God is seeking. All the other things are in his hands. He is seeking, praise the Lord, for people to worship him in truth and in spirit. So you see, there is nothing which Abraham would have done without a worship. So without a worship, even if you give this, I think all the gold and silver belongs to you, to God. So this is the highest ministry, and you must begin. No longer shall your name be called Abram, Abram, which means a higher father, but your name shall be Abraham, which means the father of many nations. For I have made you a father of many nations. Praise the Lord. That which the parents could not transform from Abraham, God transformed him. I want to tell you that we are basically in the hands of God. You are here. There is something which you want to be done in your life. Ikomikononi muamongo. Stop looking it from your wife. Stop looking it from the handshake. I think the people who are now blaming the government, almost 87.2% are Christians. Dugu mwenye kona ushuhuda, tukikutana nae, anapiga uhuru. Anapiga uhuru mbaka na shindo nini inaenderea. Basically, whatever you want in your life is in the hands of God. God said, and I not the government, and I will multiply you. And I, those who want to get married, it is not your dressing which is going to give you a husband. You may dress and dress and dress, but I, those who want to get anything, and I, and I, and I, and I, I want you to put your trust basically to God and remove it from anything else. Praise the Lord. And after that, we see Abraham walking with God. And after that, we see Abraham, who is now walking under a very powerful revelation. When you walk before God, you will receive some of the most powerful revelation. Remember that we are speaking about renewing our covenant of righteousness with God. May you give us 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 
Sometimes we speak of righteousness and we think that I, righteousness is an act or righteousness is a state. I agree with you, righteousness may be an act, righteousness may be a state, but I want to speak as righteousness being a person to a point that if you fail, if you fail to move with this person, it will be very hard for you to experience righteousness. To a point that if you leave this person somewhere, no matter how many kilometers you'll go, you will go those kilometers to me without righteousness. Because I believe that righteousness, in as, is in, 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 in as long as it is a state or it is an act, righteousness is also a person. Can you give us 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and uh, also uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it is says, for he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In Christ Jesus, we become the righteousness of God. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Because we are trying to live a righteous life, but we are denying the one who is righteousness, a place in our hearts. Siju ni taiputu na mnagani. Tunajaribu kitu ambacho ni kigumu. Tunakata kutembea na mungu, lakini tunajaribu uungu. Ah, yeo imeingia. Wanayusu wapewe sifa. Ambia jirani yako. Unajaribu uungu, lakini unakata mungu. Sasa hiyo uungu utaiwezaje? Eh? Hiyo uungu utaiwezaje? Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Praise the Lord. People are doing all manner of sins between Monday and Saturday. Tumejificha. And then on Sunday we come and try uungu. <laughs> Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Ulikataa mungu kuanzia mande mpaka Saturday, lakini Sunday unajaribu uungu. Haingi, haingi. Bwana yusu wapewe sifa. Haingi. <coughs> Kwa sababu, huyo mungu ndi atakaye kusaidia katika uungu. Kwa hivyo, muache mungu nawe upotewe na uungu. Ok, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So who is righteousness? He is Jesus Christ. So anytime you want to experience righteous life, you must have the righteousness of God with you. If you leave him somewhere, you have left righteous. You know, the time that we are living, people have left Jesus. People have really left Jesus. We are living in times, in, in the times when I can manage to preach the way I'm preaching na jana nilikuwa mahali ambapo si pazuri. We are living in times when even when somebody is leading a worship but is not here. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. You don't even know where they were. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Those are the times that we are living in. We are living in a times when we desire, you see, it is a desire. We desire to please God. We desire to live righteous life. We desire to continue with that covenant of righteousness with God because it was a covenant of righteousness. But the problem is that we don't want this God. 
we are leaving him tunamwacha tunamwacha and it is very hard because unto him you are in Christ Jesus who became unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption what does that mean it is very hard for you to live a life without walking hand in hand with Jesus tuko pamoja and this is becoming more of who are not born again you know sometimes we don't find anybody to tell us like that there are some times when we don't find anybody to tell us like that sometimes it becomes even more complicated if you have never been born again because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God you may try so many things you may try so many things but he is the righteousness of God i want you to give i want to give you a, 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 a another word which i read na ikaniguza sana in luke chapter 20 luke chapter 20 verse luke chapter 10 verse 20 and jeremiah chapter 17 verse 13 jeremiah chapter 17 verse 13 renewing our covenant of righteousness with God our righteousness is not only an act it is yes but it is not only righteousness is not only a condition it is but it is not only but righteousness is also a person so if you don't walk with this person hand in hand righteousness will be very very hard for you very hard for you tunataka righteousness lakini hatutaki kutembea na Mungu tunataka kutembea na onyango twende disco tunataka kutembea na njeri umpeleke akakule chips na kuku and at the same time unataka righteousness na sijasema kumnunulia kuku na nini ni vibaya but at times unaacha Mungu righteousness haina njeri righteousness haina onyango righteousness haina mtu it is basically Jesus Christ bwana Yesu apewe sifa nevertheless atarudisha tu hapo umetoka ama tuanze tu na hii let's start with this o lord the hope of israel who forsook you shall be ashamed those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the lord the fountain of the living waters ili tutoke hapo i want you to mark the word they shall be written in the earth ambia jirani yako they shall be written in the earth mwambie coming soon hiyo hiyo coming soon hebu twende kwa hiyo ingine luke chapter 10 they shall be written in the earth ebuskia hi nevertheless do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written where your names are written where na hiyo ingine hiyo ingine now ask your neighbor where is your name written Unajua majina zetu ziko huku kwa dunia. Praise the Lord. Tunakuja hapa tunafurahi that I am the proud owner of plot number RVHC 68 hectares at Roy. Go and do the search and do the search again and again. At one time we wanted to buy a plot in Pangani we were not sure if we were count so we did a search of 2000 and we were not fully convinced and somebody told us ah search ya 2000 mtagongoa do the search again and again and again and we did another one for 5000 another one told us acha na hiyo search sasa kuna ile ya 10000 yenye inaenda ndani and we did so you think you are a proud owner of RR 10000 hectares 
But that one is only written where? At the lands registrar. Wapi? Imeandikuwa wapi? You, your name can be written in the, on earth and fail to be written in heaven. And Jesus said, rejoice. Not that your name is written on this earth, but that your name is written where? Praise the Lord. I am an elder. My name is written in the book of eldership. Isili Parish. I don't know I'm elder number what. Maybe 26 or 27 or whatever. But I can't be proud if my name is not written where? Bwana Yesu apewa sifa. Our names are written here. They are here. They are here on this. They are here. They are written in the land of registrar. They are written in so many places. But Jesus said rejoice. Not because of anything else. But because your name is written in the book of life. They are written wapi. I thank God that I'm not seeing so old people. So many old people here. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask them. Where is your name written? You know, there is those kind of preaching where the preacher tells us to tell the next person so many things until you are looking at this old man and Akila Wakati Unamsukuma and he's 90 years. I can't do that to my daddy. Mwana yuzo pewe sifa. Angalia nikaona hakuna mtu hakuna 90 years hapa unaweza msukuma hivi. We preachers, we have so many things. Mwana yuzo pewe sifa. Are we getting somebody, something? So our second reading in the book of Hebrews says, remember, remember those days when you got born again. Remember, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. Remember, remember wakati ambapo ulukume okoka. By the way, I can give with my own example. Before I got born again, I used to earn a lot of money. Na mimi nilikuwa nauza vitu za magendo. Lakini sasa usinione hivyo. Nione nikiwa transformed. Bwana usiniogope. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. I used to earn until I used to pay the caretaker 6 months in advance. Mpaka na sahau. So the caretaker knew that this person alikuwa na pesa. So sometimes namuuliza, tulilipa mpaka wapi? Anajua tulifika June, ananigonga, ananiambia April. Likuwa ni mesahau. Na muambia ni sawa tu. Hata we kulanga ukiendaka tu. <laughs> Ia golden bag. Wacha tukulange tukienda. Tukiendaka tu na wewe. Praise the Lord. But when I got born again, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In fact, in one month's time, I was able to stand in a big church and to preach. One month's time was filled with the Holy Spirit. I used to love God until uh, uh, until hey, Bwana Sifa. Praise the Lord. I don't want to say this. I don't know kama uh, I'm a faker. There is this girl who looked unto me and said, wow, that young man is preaching fire. Bwana Yusopewe Sifa. I love unaka Bwana Yusopewe Sifa. Somewhere on the road, unasahau mungu. Zile fellowship ndulikuwa naenda. The way kumbuka tuliokoka. The way ulikuwa naogopa dhambi. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Nikaacha kazi ya magendo. Ungeniambia mambo ya magendo na kuambia shindwe. We are going to heaven. And Jesus is coming soon. And that soon might even be next week. Praise the Lord. So the writer of the book of Hebrews is saying remember. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Remember. Anataka renewing our covenant of righteousness with God. Do you know what happened? Along the way, we desire to continue in righteousness. We continue to desire in righteousness, but we don't want to spend time with righteousness. I am a die-hard fan of Manu. Manu <laughs> Eight wins and one draw in nine games. You want to spend a lot of time kwampira, but you don't want to spend time hapa. You still, you are, you are eager. You want to continue in righteousness, 
But you see, you continue in righteousness when you have left the owner of righteousness somewhere. Hakuna mungu bila mungu ni kujidanganya. Hello. Watu hawataki mungu lakini wanataka uungu. There is no uungu without mungu. I want to spend the time kwa maniyu. Kulalanga sa siku. These people, I don't know why they are doing us like that. They are bringing a lot of matches at 11 p.m. Uliza jirani yako, kwa nini wanalete mipira za maniyu sa atano? So elder must sleep at one. Mwana yusu wapewe sifa. And we want to spend time with the newspapers. Ambazo si mbaya. We want to spend time with the... Zinaitango opera what? Mwana yusu wapewe sifa. But in a certain point, we want righteous life. Hakuna mtu mwenye ataki. Lakini... Atutaki mungu, lakini kila mtu akoiga kuwa na uungu. It becomes very difficult. Praise the Lord. So righteousness is not only an act. It is, but it is not only. It is not only a condition, but righteousness is a person, and that person is God. So if you don't walk with him, righteousness becomes very hard. Bwana yusu apewe sifa. Abraham was told, and I, not the chief. <laughs> Yesterday I was up country. And we spoke with my aging mom. I, lo I loved that fellowship. I saw her, my child. And it was like, I don't want to go home. I want to stay with this woman until I check her, check her, check her on Goze Mecca. And then it was like, Mokoro, Badu Munapewa Pesa Zawazai. Mwana yesu apewe sifa. And he was like, he, ni kama nilipata mara moja, lakini hiyo ingine ni kama wamekula. Mwana yesu apewe sifa. Praise the Lord. And he was like, karibu ni cheke. What do I want to mean? You may, wanaweza kukufanya hivi na wafanya hivi na wafanya hivi. But I want you to tell them, siyo njini mmebeba baraka yangu. God says, and I will. Banesu apewe sifa. I, whatever you want, there is a person who says I. Praise the Lord. Don't keep on blaming. Blame, blame game dina kwanka imeja. When the church is not good, we blame. When things are not good, they blame. When things are bad in the family, husband blames wife. When things are going wrong, wife blames husband. So what goes on is a blame game. Blame game, blame game. And you think you are like the, what you are because of a person. When we call for a, an evangelism kesha, and only three people appear, they blame those who didn't come. The leadership blame the congregation. The congregation blame the leadership. But Abraham was told, I, I, you have been with the society, you have been with your parents, You have been with your education. Even you are a holder of PhD. But for 99 years, you still remained Abraham. I. We are basically in the hands of God. Praise the Lord. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, as we come to conclusion. Matthew chapter 6, righteousness in as much as it is a state, in as much as it is an act, righteousness is also a person. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his not it. Many preachers say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and it. Your Bible should not read it. Because righteousness is a person. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. 
There is no addition, good addition, without Christ. He is the author of all things. Watu wanakata abuana, watu wamekata yesu abuana. Naumbi watu unataka kuwakoka ati siku yangu ijafika. Ile siku itafika ni wakati uko mgonjwa, tunakuombea, unaishi siku tatu, unatuacha. Na hii siku ingine yote ulikuwa na wakati wakuka. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. People are waking at 3 a.m. And especially those who live. Hiyo saidi ya nyastaki kusema kwa sababu utasema ni wewe ni mehubiri. So that they can make it in town in time. But they don't want to seek for righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. May we stand. I want us to have a time of worship. Praise and worship. Renewing our covenant of righteousness with God. Renewing our covenant of righteousness with God. Where did we go wrong? Tunataka mungu. Ama tunataka uungu. Lakini tunamkata mungu. Righteousness is basically God. So we should desire to walk before God. When Abraham was 99 years, the Lord appeared unto him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will multiply you. And you shall no longer be called Abraham, the high father, but you shall be called Abraham, the father of many nations. We have stayed Abraham for so long because we have failed to walk before God. Today God wants us to become Abraham and we are destined to increase, but this increase shall come as a result of walking before God. Kama kuna maali unasikia umeacha Yesu, inafaa umrudie. Kama unasikia uhusiano wako na mungu, siyo thabiti. Kwa sababu ya jambu moja na ingine, ayashua yu uungu itakuwa ngumu sana kwako. Uungu pasipo mungu itakuwa ngumu sana. Righteousness without the righteousness of God, it will be very difficult, the worship team. Then as we worship, reflect on your life with God, on your walk with God. And renew the covenant of righteousness with God. Worship him. Jesus. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble Oh. 
pass me by. I want you to take a time of silence and reflect on your relationship with the righteousness of God. Desire to be righteous, but without the righteousness of God, who is God himself, who is Jesus, it will be a mounting task for you. Desire to walk before God. And God himself, not any person and not any institution, will multiply you, not only add you, but multiply. Father, we thank you because of your word. You are there, you are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. You can show by lifting it up. Ngalipenda kuokoka. Bila kuokoka, I assure you, it is hard. Mimi sita kuficha. Uungu ni ngumu pasipo mungu. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord.